Hello and welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic where I'm sitting here with a smile on my face because I've read the rules of this puzzle and this must be the greatest rule set in the history of Sudoku. <laughs> the puzzle is called Setter's Day Off and it's by Michael Lefkowitz. 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 I meant to pronounce the W. I know that because Michael left a comment on the last video we did of one of his puzzles. Um, this setter has been making waves in the Sudoku world and we have been inundated with requests and recommendations to try this one. You can see that all there is in the grid is Michael's signature in the bottom right hand corner and the reason for that is that well it's called setter's day off we have to make our own sudoku using some rules that michael has left uh, i mean in fact in fact in fact the only real way of explaining what's going on here is to um is to read you these rules because they are so absolutely fantastic these are the rules of this puzzle i need a break from setting sudokus could you set one for me please I'd like for my Sudoku to have five straight lines and nothing else. A horizontal arrow pointing east with a one cell circle. A horizontal thermometer. A horizontal German whispers line. A vertical German whispers line. A vertical zipper line. Each should be as long as it is possible to make orthogonal straight lines of that variety in a Sudoku. Put them wherever, just not in the cells with my signature, please. Oh, I'd also like some sort of anti-chess constraint. Anti-knight, anti-king or anti-bishop. Up to you, whichever works. Oh, and make sure the solution has a three in the corner, won't you? And that, that's it. That's the rules. So we have to, we have to use Michael's preferences to construct our own valid Sudoku. So it's a very... I mean, what a brilliant idea this is. Um, now, I, if you are new to Sudoku, you may not know what some of these terms are. What What is a German whispers line? What is a zipper line? Do not worry. I will explain that um, uh, in a few few moments time. Um, but I wanted to show you, I just snipped some of the comments on Logic Masters Germany about this. Um, I mean, everybody is saying this is like an all time favorite cheeky masterpiece. Um, the last two comments are very funny. Uh, Monty Python's Holy Ale writes, I set the puzzle for you, but I'm afraid I accidentally solved it in the process. My bad. And Halakani, this is the, why did you sign the puzzle I've set? <laughs> okay, I mean, this is, this is just comedy, comedy isn't it? Um, right, but before I read you the rules, or at least explain some of those terms to you, um, let me tell you about some other things that are going on quickly. We've got um, Rift Clown Sudoku Hunt coming in just two days' time. It's the 30th of January today, isn't it? So let me show you. Um, this is the Sudoku Gallery. Here we go. <laughs> you can see some of the puzzles are forming the pictures on the walls. Um, yeah, so this is coming at 4 p.m. UK time to our patrons over on Patreon uh, for the February competition. Um, so uh, I recommend it to you. Rift Clowns, Rift Clowns puzzles are great. Um, and it's a couple of bucks a month to join us on Patreon. And it must surely be the best value uh, per unit of joy. What would a unit of joy be called? I don't know. Let's let's call it a riff clown. So it, it's got a very high uh, riff clown quota per penny spent or cent spent. Um, so uh, yeah, I'll try and remember to put a link on the screen if you're interested in that. Uh, Hexels, we are returning to stream more Hexels uh, this time on Wednesday night at 10 p.m. UK time. Love to have your company for that. Um, yeah, look out for it. Um, and then I've got some birthdays to do. So let's start by wishing Tom a very happy 22nd birthday. And I happen, well, I apparently you are the coolest drummer ever, Tom. And I know this um, because your friends send you their love. This is love from Camille. Is it Camille? I think it's Camille. I've written Camille. If it could be Camilla, but I think Camille. Charlotte, Lily, uh, Jack, Jeff, Parker and Connor all send you their love so tom many happy returns of the day i hope you get to have some cake um next cara 
has turned 33 today and I know this because your wife Shelley wrote to us and told us that three is your favourite number Cara so you have a very special birthday turning 33 today I hope you have a great one with of course chocolate cake with the correct ratio of icing to cake which could even be three to one um, that would be a very delicious cake. Um, and now over to Lackey, who's turned 30 today. And I know this because your best friend Hayden wrote to us. Uh, and Lackey, I understand you've recently moved to Germany from New Zealand, which is where Hayden still is. And Lackey is frantically applying for jobs. Well, I wish you the best with that. Um, we have been told, I do not know whether it's true, we've been told that cracking the cryptic makes you very employable uh, because you you learn how to think logically i hope i hope there is some truth to the truth to that i hope you get a job soon lackey and many happy returns um and then finally rachel has turned 24 today and i know this because your boyfriend tommy wrote to us and i think the two of you were english uh, by birth but you are living together in japan now and this is your first japanese birthday rachel so many happy returns i'm a huge fan of japanese food but i do not know whether they do chocolate cake well i hope you i hope i hope you can have some um and that's all the birthdays so let us turn our attention to try i was going to say to solve this puzzle but we have to construct the puzzle i suppose today now the testers who have looked at this have sent me a different version. Sorry, brief interruption there. I realised that I had a different version of this that the setters had sent me, um, but I hadn't loaded it. So that was my bad. Um, but here it is. Um, and you can see we've got Michael uh, in slightly lighter, uh, a lighter font than in, in, in the original version. But this lighter version, uh, version of Michael uh, or Michael's puzzle has a great deal more rules at the bottom and these rules uh, explain some of the terms so the first thing we had to do when we solve the puzzle is to create a horizontal arrow pointing east with a one cell circle and what we are told is that digits along an arrow must sum to the digit in that arrow circle so that's normal sudoku arrow rules so let's um now we might be able to do this actually let's try and put so if we wrote put an a circle there and then drew a line out of it. Uh, we could do three cells. Um, and then what, what we would do is we could populate those. If we, if we made this one, two, and three, that would be equal to six because you add up the digits along the arrow and that's what you put in the circle. But we can put anything we want in here and we can make the arrow any length we want, except it has to be horizontal. So for some of you, that will be a clue as to how long the arrow has to be, I think because we're also told we have to make everything as long as we can now what else does it say it says digits along a thermometer must increase from the bulb end so i don't think i've got a very good way of let's try and draw a bit of a thermometer oh mavericks taking off in a very strange sounding plane um so let's say this was a thermometer and this this is the bulb of the thermometer let's make that a two this square now has to be bigger than two so we could have four five seven eight for example that would be a way of constructing a sudoku thermometer adjacent digits on a german whispers line must differ in value by at least five so let's draw a line in here and make this square here a two now this square would have to be at least five different from two so it could be seven eight or nine if it was nine this has to be at least five different from nine so it could be four three or one it couldn't be two because of sudoku etc along the line um digits which are an equal distance from the center of a zipper line have the same sum now zipper lines are meant to be sort of purply lines aren't they let's let's draw a zipper line in um for odd length lines, that sum is also the central digit. How long have I drawn this one? Okay, that works. So this is the center. And what we're being told here is that whatever we put in the middle, let's write, can we do, yeah, eight might work. If we put eight in the middle and this was a one, then these two digits are the same distance from the center of the line, aren't they? So that would have to be a seven because one plus seven equals eight. Two plus six equals eight and then three plus five equals eight so that would be a completely legitimate zipper line um and then and then we've got all the chess constraints explained so it says an anti-night constraint would mean cells 
a single chess knight's move apart may not contain the same digit. Uh, so if this was a digit, let's say that was a one, then a chess knight could jump in a single move to all of those squares and therefore none of those squares could contain a one. Um, so that's how chess knights rules work. An anti-king constraint would mean cells a single chess king's move apart may not contain the same digit. So if this was a one, you couldn't put a one into those two squares because obviously um, a chess king can move a single cell diagonally as well as as well as to so in other words what you could do is just draw a, a ring around a, a, a cell and say well okay you can see normal sudoku rules out all of those so there's no additional constraint that arises in, as respects the orange cells the additional constraint that arises from an anti-king constraint is the single diagonal move um, and I think there's one more move, which is an anti-bishop constraint, means that a digit could not repeat anywhere along the diagonals radiating from that digit's cell. So if this was a one, what that's saying is you couldn't put a one in any of those squares because they would share a bishop's diagonal with this central cell. Uh, so that's an unusual constraint. We don't see that very often in Sudoku. I'm going to go back to the one where Michael is in bold. Um, do have a go. The way to play is, or to construct is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Let's go back up to the in the instructions and see exactly what I've got to make. I've got to have five straight lines, a horizontal arrow pointing east, and these have all got to be as long as possible. Right. So. The, the arrow pointing to the east, so it's pointing this way to the that side. Uh, so that might not look right to you, but I, I, I know. I, I want the arrow to point in this direction, not this direction. Um, that's going to be exactly three cells long, isn't it? Because if we had a horizontal arrow that was four cells long, uh, how should we do that? If we had a, say that was the arrow and that was the circle, the minimum I could put into these squares would be a one, two, three, four quadruple and one, two and three and four. The triangular number for four is 10. Um, so this would be a 10 in the circle. I can't write 10 in the circle. So what we're being told is we need a three cell horizontal arrow. Uh, that's, that's all that's going to give us actually. So that's probably not the main constraint. I mean, I can see a horizontal thermometer is hugely constrained because it's got to be as long as possible. And there's no problem with having a complete row of um, horizontal thermometer edge, is it? The problem there is going to be which way round does it go? Because it could go, it could go like this, or it could go it's a bit of a typing competition like that and it can obviously go anywhere in the column oh except over michael that's right isn't it it's not allowed to put them wherever just not in the cells with my signature please <laughs> um so they can't we can't put the horizontal thermometer here but there are hmm, there are in effect 16 different possible thermometers because each of these rows could have a thermometer and it could be in either direction. So that's that's mm, that's very constrained. It was very, very prescribed in terms of what we've got to put in the grid. But it's not very clear about where it's going to go. And then we've got to have a horizontal German whispers line. And a vertical German whispers line. Right. So. We need to talk about some secrets about German whispers lines, don't we? So the first thing, the first most obvious point about a German whispers line, and we're told we have to make the longest whispers line we can. Well, we can't make a nine cell whispers line. And the reason for that is where would you put the five on it? And the answer is there's nowhere to put the five. If you try and put the five in, you've got to come up with a digit that's at least five away from five that goes next to it on the line and there are no such digits if you go down you get to zero or negative numbers and if you go up you get to 10 or higher and they aren't sudoku digits so five is not going to work on this line so it's a maximum it's going to be a maximum of eight cells long um, and i think it can be eight cells long so let's think about the other properties of German whispers lines, which are that 
they oscillate their polarity. So having discovered that there's no five on the line, we can think of any digit on a German whispers line as either below five or above five. But what happens is, if this one is above five, let's ask the question, can this also be above five? And the answer to that is clearly no, because no matter how separated these two digits are, the most separation we can get is nine and six, and nine and six are not five apart. Well, ooh, whoopsie. Um, so this digit has to be from the other side of five. Um, and then this digit again, now this couldn't be one, two, three or four, could it? So this would have to be the other side of five. So you get this oscillation. But I think the key thing here is going to be to think about the so-called monogamous digits, the digits that only have one possible partner on a German whispers line. And they are the digits four and six. That is a total shank in terms of my typing. Um, I, Mark was astonished the other day to hear I never use the number pad. I don't think anybody who watches the channel religiously would be remotely surprised. No, I always use the those things at the top, not not the number pad. But anyway, four or six, what could you put next to say four here? If this is four, this could only be nine um, because we need a digit that's five away. If this digit's six, it can only be one. And that what that's going to mean as far as a um, an eight cell line is the only places we could put four and six on it are going to be at the very tips because if we put them in the middle if you put four here it's going to have double nine and that's going to break sudoku rules same same obviously with six and one so the four and the six would have to be at the edges next to a one nine pair and then how does it go then after that? I think it's going to go to threes and sevens is my my inclination. Because we, yeah, the, the way to think about it then is to think about what are the properties of the seven, which is the next in, it's, it's the next most extreme number compared to six. And the same is true of three as regards four. So four is like a really difficult number, the most difficult number, but the next most difficult number is the three because that only has two partners. The three can only go next to eight and nine. So given we have to put us, if we want to have an eight cell line, we need a three on it. We're going to have to use the nine, which is in one of those positions to shelter our three. So we're going to have a three in one of those positions. And the same is true of, a, of the seven. If we have a seven on the line, it's going to have to be surrounded by the one and the two. And we know the one is in one of those two positions. So they have to be three, seven. These have to be two, eight. Now, this is going to get complicated, though. <laughs> it's already quite complicated. But, but, so it's going to go, it's going to go 4, 4, 3, 2, 1, 9, 8, 7, 6, or, which is like two interlocking descending sequences isn't it so if this if it starts with four it goes four three two one and this goes nine eight seven six but if it starts with six it goes ascending sequences yeah because it's sort of the reversal of the line yes we could yeah that's yeah okay i've got to get this clear in my head because mm, yes yeah in fact i might just write this in because, let me explain why, because uh, what I'm seeing there is, and that's going to be a descending sequence. Um, what I noticed as I was about to say the other, the other version of it is that the other version of this line, i.e. the version which starts with six here, can just be viewed as sort of picking this line up and twisting it over. So, you know, we could we could absolutely have six, six, one, seven, two, eight, three, nine, four, just by picking the line up and rotating it over. The other the other complication here is that the five does not have to be there. So the five could be there absolutely, but if we shift the four back to here, we'd have this sequence of eight digits, and then the five would go at the other end of the row. So, I mean, exactly like this. Um, four, nine, three, eight, 
27165. So that's a possibility. And of course, yeah, it's tricky. I don't know how to do this actually. Because there are quite a lot of possibilities. I mean, this row's out of bounds. We can't use that row for the horizontal whisper or the horizontal tomato. In fact, I'm just going to black that one out. That cannot be used. But if we put the five here, we could equally have the 617 version. And if we don't have the five here, we could have the 617 version here and then the five there. So there are like four different permutations of how the whispers might work horizontally. And there are going to be four different permutations of how the whisper line therefore has to, has to work vertically. because so we need a vertical whisper line that has exactly the same property. Ah, I suppose the vertical whisper line can't overlap with two to, you know these two col columns so those are sort of out for where the so the whisper well it's not i mean the whispers the vertical whispers going in one of the first seven columns the horizontal whispers going in one of the first eight rows it's not brilliant is it um Okay, and we still have to think about, there's one more, there's a vertical zipper line. And rather than disturb what I've got in the grid, I'm going to imagine it was a horizontal zipper line because I can, I can, I can see how that will work because I can absolutely have a nine cell um, zipper line um, because what I can do is I can put nine in the middle of it. And one way, to, I mean, zipper lines have this beautiful mathematical property, which is... Um, obviously these two digits are summing to this digit aren't they so if, if this digit is x if we were to if we didn't know I, I mean i know that's nine because i can do the maths in my head but let's let's make that x and let's see see if we can prove how this is a nine if we want to have a nine cell zipper can we prove that this is a nine um the answer is yes because we can we can avail ourselves firstly of a secret and the secret, something I only tell my very favourite people, is of course that any complete row of a Sudoku will contain the digits 1 to 9 once each by the rules of Sudoku. Those digits add up to 45. So I know this row adds up to 45. And I know if I'm defining this as x, I know those two digits will also add up to x. These two digits will also add up to x. These will add up to x and these will add up to x because that's the nature of the zipper line. Well, that means this line overall sums to 5x. And that means x equals, yeah, 9. So that's, that's what's going to happen on the zipper line. But then, but then it's going to get tricky again, because obviously this could be a 1, 8, 2, 7, 3, 6, or 4, 5 pair. And ditto with this, and ditto with this, and ditto with this. So all we actually know, I think, about the vertical zipper line is that it's going to have a nine in its middle cell. Ooh, goodness, this is tricky actually. Um, I can't think about the anti-chess constraint. That's going to be, I think that's going to be where madness lies. I think we've either got to think about where the the vertical, well, I think we've got to think about where the vertical German whispers line, because that's very specified. The vertical German whispers line, I uh, see, I might have to, I might get rid of these, this vertical, I might get rid of the black cells, I think they're just going to confuse me. What I was going to say is that the, the, the vertical German whispers line and indeed the horizontal German whispers line definitely has that string of digits in it but they could be reversed <laughs> so it's definitely got that string of digits in it um, now so yeah, that's horrible though so far as um I was just trying to think about where there, where therefore a vertical version of this line would interrupt or interact with the thermometer, which it must do. So imagine this was going vertically down the grid. 
I mean, there might be some cells where we couldn't make the overlap happen, but at first blush, I mean, the 7 looks very easy to overlap with, doesn't it? I mean, imagine this was vertical and there was a 7 in that position. Then that could go 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And I don't think anything would clash. I mean, the se yeah, the seven on yeah, the seven on the thermo is surrounded by an eight and a six. So the only way you'd get into trouble is if that six clashed, but you wouldn't have to. Yeah, in fact, it wouldn't if it was there. Oh, I suppose maybe maybe the seven, oh, the, the seven could be there. So if this was going down, this would be, yeah, that if, so say it went 5, 4, 9, etc, etc, that would be a 7. Surrounded by a 2 and a 1, with a 6 here. But the 6 that would be adjacent to the 7 on the thermo would be in that position. Well, that's fine. Oh, this is this is confusing me. I'm going to get rid of those. Right. So what we've got to do instead of that is think perhaps about how how the two German whispers lines interact with each other. How do they interlock? But in doing that, we have to bear in mind <laughs> that we don't know. Well, we know some things, actually. We do know some things. Very, very central cells of the grid. Oh, mm. Yeah, all right. I'm going to tell you that that line is not, cannot be correct. Probably. No, that's right. That's right. That must be right. That must be right. Yeah. OK, I'm happy with that logic. So there is no. In fact, I can extend that logic. I'm going to claim that one is not. Is it's not possible to put the horizontal whisper line in row five. I'm going to claim it's not possible to put it in row two. And I'm going to claim it's not possible to put it in row eight. And the reason that I think that's valid. Let's just highlight those two in yellow. But, but the, the, the principle I can I can illustrate with this row. The principle is that any digit within the green string is next to a very specified number. So if we decided, OK, we wanted the overlap to happen on the three, we know that the three, so there's going to be a vertical whispers line that's going to interlock here with this three. Well, I know that three is touching nine and eight. I don't know the order of the nine and the eight, but I know it's touching nine and eight. So how could we put 9 and 8 in the, those two squares vertically and not have a clash? There is no way, is there? I mean, even if we take an extreme digit and I say, OK, I'll try and make the overlap happen on the 4, wherever the 4 is. And the 4, the thing is, the 4 could be in loads of different positions. The 4 could be in the second column. It could be in the first column if we start with a 4 and we shift it that way. It could be in this column if we... if if we start with a six over here, or it could be in this column, if we start with a five here and then have the four running this way. But anywhere you put the four, the four is definitely next to a nine, isn't it? In the horizontal string. That nine will either be on the left or the right of the four, definitely. And therefore, vertically, the nine will definitely be on the top or the bottom of the four. And if you've put this string in row five or row two or row eight, you're going to get a clash. So that this cannot be correct. So this is good. This is really good. I'm going to go back to my uh, my previous nomenclature. So I've now, I think, managed to rule out the horizontal from all of those and this one. Right. I'm going to move this one up uh, now. Do I? I'm going to, actually, I'm going to move it to there, I think. Or maybe I move it to here and we try that one first. Yeah, let's try that. Let's try the top row then. Four, five, nine, 
three eight two seven one six delete this that cannot exist in the puzzle that's that's definitely blacked out and this is the string of digits I want to focus on right so can we have the interlock the interlock happening in the first row of the grid and the answer to that is I don't know yet but I suspect not Ooh, well it's quite difficult to do it actually oh no it is possible to do it you do it there don't you that's the only place you can do it ah I didn't think of that right yeah so what I'm seeing there is that I mean imagine it was like this that the arrangement then what I can do is run off the five the other the other version of this the 6172 version so if I ran 6172 down here I wouldn't get a clash in box one now could you actually have it have it anywhere else it's quite interesting actually because if you did flick the five over there then that's going to run into the michael if you if you hang it down off that column this 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 is almost feeling like it's right i think because that's very interesting that you can actually you can the reason this is interesting is you can pinpoint exactly exactly the orient well not the orientation but you can you can pinpoint exactly where the five goes on both on both the horizontal and the vertical whisper but okay but there's a lot lot to do before we we're convinced that this is unique so i can see how this is a possible position of overlap now if you tried to overlap on the four you couldn't do it could you because the four we've already said is next to the nine and vertically it will also be next to the nine and that's going to be true of any of these other digits you know if we try and overlap on i mean you can't overlap in position the, the two can never be in the first position as regards the column this digit in the column from the column the column german whisper is either going to be four six or five isn't it so we can only overlap on the four six and the five and we can't overlap on the four or the six because they are always the six is always going to be next to a one the four is always going to be next to a nine whichever way round this is yeah so okay so in, if, if, so if we are claiming that we're going to try and put the whisper in row one you can make it work but only if you overlap on the five and then because the five is either at the start or the end of the row you can't put the five at the end of the row because you're going to overlap with the michael <laughs> this is really interesting <laughs> so now what we have to do is to think about whether or not there are versions of this that were let's just repeat this then so five five four nine three eight two seven one six now the interesting thing here I'm thinking is if I can get rid of this one I bet you that one's the same logic um, hmm. right so how would this work let's let's highlight the string let's get rid of this uh, and just make that that corner cell orange to indicate that is a possible position of overlap um, now hmm. so we need something that's going to be in the right position With, hmm, it's, it's very difficult to do this in a sort of clean way I mean in 
in this arrangement, you can't overlap on the five, can you? Because the five in column one is either going to be there or there. And if we shift the five over there, the, the five is either going to be there or there from the vertical whispers perspective. I don't think you can overlap on the four either for the same sorts of reasons. The four is either going to be at the start or end of the row, or it's going to be one shifted in because the five is in one of these positions. So you can't overlap on the four. And the nine you can overlap on. But... But if you overlap on the nine... We know that the vertical 9 is going to be sandwiched between a 4 and a 3. And you can't put the 3 here, because the 3 needs to then lead on to the 8, 2, 7, 1, 6, which are going to be up the top of the grid. So I think you'd have to put the 4 there. And that looks at first blush like it's going to clash. I need, I need to just think about this. Hang on. How can I do that? How can I get that overlap to work in this position? I, I can't see a way immediately, so I, I, I'm just... Just keep, but just bear with me while I mull this. Is it is it literally legitimate to say, okay, the nine has to be bounded by the four and the three? That is true. It's an inter it's internal to the green sequence. So in the column, if I want to overlap in this position, and the same would be true with trying to overlap with a seven here. If I switch this round and this was 6, 1, it would be the same point, wouldn't it? Then the 1 would be bounded by the 7 and the 6. If this was 6, 1, yeah, you'd always end up having to put the 5 here because to get that digit into the third position, you have to start with the 5. I don't think that is a valid position to overlap. This one is that this one looks more difficult to me to rule out because this what we know is a three is is bounded on the in the green whichever the direction is by an eight and a nine so if I put eight and nine there you see there ah this is this is right this works this works because. Although this is fourth in the sequence from this direction because I started with the five, I can make it third in the sequence from a vertical perspective by, by not starting with a five here, but moving the five down here. And now that's bad. That's very bad because that works. Because now I don't have to have, this doesn't have to be eight. There, you can do that. And now we, and then we know the sequence. Sequence would be that doesn't work from a king's move perspective we could we could rule this out or we could we could move the rule out this precise version by king's move oh actually Wow, okay. Ah, oh, this is very, this is really interesting. This is really interesting now because no jokes about me and parties and my soporific effect on people. In fact, wasn't soporific the answer in the Times crossword today to four across? I think it was, and it made me feel bad about myself. Um, now, this is interesting because Well, to achieve an overlap in this position, 
Yeah, what I'm thinking is the nine and the eight, and it, it wouldn't matter if we reverse the order, because if we reverse the order here, and this was six, one, seven, we know the seven is always flanked by the two and the one. So it's, it's the same, there's sort of a, um, yeah, the, the alternating digits on the whisper are always one apart. Look, we always have the nine, eight, seven, six, the four, three, two, one. So if you want to overlap on the three, we know that nine, eight bounds it on both sides. And to avoid a Sudoku clash, you're going to always put yourself in a position where the king's move is going to is going to inhibit that that situation but the, well actually that's that's again interesting because that means that the anti-bishop rule doesn't work either because the anti-bishop rule is sort of a more extreme version of the anti-king rule so the only way the only way you can overlap in this position And this is so cool because it's symmetrical. Wouldn't matter if you move the five over there. It's exactly the same principle. You could have the overlap here, but you're always going to be overlapping in this in this same manner. Yeah, this is very interesting. Yeah, so the only way this works is if you if you can have which you're going to be able to have aren't you if you can have um a knight's move restriction in the puzzle let's just think about that so you'd have seven here you'd have six here you'd have two and one ah. yeah i think that's going to be okay so that is a possible position. I mean, if that's a possible position, that's a possible position. And I have a horrible feeling that that's going to mean by symmetry, if that's a possible overlapping position, I think that is. Because it's sort of the same. Um, I can construct this because I can shift the five to the bottom of the grid. But let, I think I can force that to also be an overlapping position in exactly the same way. It's going to be the fourth in this direction. So if I put the five here, this will be the third in the sequence. And I can obviously make it the third in the sequence from this direction just by not having the five here. So I can definitely create an overlap there. And then I'm going to be okay again. So that's bad news. This is very, this is actually quite, I think this only had three stars out of difficulty. It should, I mean, I shouldn't be surprised it's quite difficult because um, we have to make a puzzle given not the most amount of information. But the problem here is that now, now there's going to be an awful lot of cells. Yeah, so the fourth cell in any row or column can be, I'm not sure about that cell actually, that's, that's, that's both fours. And that might not work, because to have the overlap here, don't you have to put the fives in the same place? That's what that feels like to me. So you'd have 493 from this direction, 493 from this direction, and these two digits would be the same. Yeah, so I think I think it ha you have to create an offset to get them in different boxes. So this will work, this will work. This will work, this will work, and the equivalents down here as well. So you, you get like a knight's... That's weird, actually. You get the knight's move pattern as the possible places of the overlap. I mean, let's just deal. You can't overlap here, can you? You can't overlap here. Because that's the fifth... Well, that's the fifth, fourth, or sixth position, depending on where you put the five. And from that position, so this comp combination, it's always 
the third or the seventh position so um or it's it's yeah i mean you could move the five so you could make it third you could make it uh, no you can't you can't you just can't put an eight here you can't and, and make it the overlap because this green string has three on that side of it and four on that side of it and it won't fit in the grid it won't, doesn't matter where you put the five that cannot be the overlap that cell i'm not saying that digit i'm saying that cell yeah, and the logic for these three must be the same as the logic for these three because it's symmetrical once we twist the grid so we need to find a way well this is bad see i thought that was going to be it because um because it works and it was clean but this is anything but clean unless there is a way of ruling out somehow generically all of these cells from being overlaps and that feels impossible what were the other what else are we got to put the thermometer in don't we thermometer is going to be on that cell or that cell actually oh ah right neither of those works oh good grief right okay this doesn't work and my brain is shouting at me that it doesn't work generically either ah oh, this is weird right i uh i almost see this i can almost i think i can almost explain it but i'm not sure i can let me just think Oh, hang on. Right. This is mad. <laughs> this, how, how can this be three stars? This is really complicated. Right. Okay. Okay, so what, I, what I've noticed here is that these two cells have to be the place, the have to have to be the possible places that I could create a horizontal thermometer because I need I know, I know that this position on the horizontal thermometer if I started with a one here one two three four I would hit the right digit and if I started with a one here I could hit the right digit here one two three four five six so one of these is the horizontal thermometer but the interesting thing about this is on the horizontal thermometer what digit are you going to have to have? Um, I mean, I'm doing it. I'm, 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 I'm operating as if it's, it's ambiguous which way it goes. But you can see, obviously, that there will be a three on one side of a four. And that three will be a knight's move away from that digit. And you might say, well, yeah, that's coincidental. But it's not, is it? It's not because of the way that the whisper works. The whisper. The whisper has the internal 4321 sequence, the 9876 sequence. So if you do decide you want to overlap on the 4, Or the six you know the six is going to have a seven on one side of it on on, on, on the thermo and that's going to hit that digit on, on on the whisper and that is that logic transposable I think it is 
how did this so, so what we're saying here is if yeah okay so this it let's let's put little digits in just to think about how this would work so if we want in fact let's do it the other way around just to absolutely convince ourselves so let's say that was 617 now it, in order to create the overlap in this position we now know that would be a five and this would be six this would be six this would be one this would be seven So this would be eight, this would be nine. We know that the, the, the other versions of the sequence would go like that, wouldn't they? Six, one, seven. But again, we've got to put a horizontal thermometer in, which is going to overlap either with the three or the seven this time, because the three and the seven are in the correct positions. And the three is always going to have to have a two in one of the words. Well, so the two is always going to be there. It's always going to be the knights move away from the two in the column. And if we tried to have the overlap instead here with this being eight, nine. Then it's starting to look very complicated. <laughs> Why can't I see whether that works or not? Um... This this nine is is, is depressing me. It's it's the it's the eight nine. There's always going to be yeah. You're always going to have an eight here. It's always going to be a knight's move away from the eight on the equivalent whisper. Yeah. So it's it's to do with it's to do with the fact that how do I how do I generalize this because I don't want to go through all of these options um, but but it's valid I think how, how can I explain this so that it's it's clear enough The way that the yeah the digit yeah I mean I don't know I don't know maybe it is clear enough obviously I think we're all happy hopefully we're all happy that we've got a big problem with a king's move and a bishop's move we're also claiming that, that I'm also claiming that there is a problem with the knight's move in this version because wherever you put the th horizontal thermometer in the positions where the overlap the overlap between the vertical whisper and the horizontal thermometer can happen which you can see in this column would have to be with a 4 or a 6 in this position would have to be with the three or the seven. You're always going to have a problem because because of the, 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 the this internal sequence that must exist on the whisper. This stepping down, the four, three, two, one, the nine, eight, seven, six, and wherever you decide to put an overlapping, I mean, may, maybe maybe see it this way. Let, just look at this sequence and imagine yeah this this works this works this is this is how to see it as general i want you to look at this sequence and imagine a vertical thermometer anywhere anywhere and obviously the properties of a vertical thermometer are that this digit is flanked by its consecutive digits so this would be eight and six in some order if we want to put the vertical thermometer here, this would be five and seven in some order. If we want to put it here, this would be zero and two in some order. And you can see that wherever you put it, you're always, it doesn't matter where the overlap happens. This would be 10 and eight, but you're always putting a digit a knight's move away from itself because of the, the internal sequencing of the whisper. So you can never do this. It cannot work. And if it cannot work, all of these orange squares are ruled out. 
as being possible overlaps. And we are left with what I thought we were going to be left with when we discovered that this one was the only way of putting an overlap or making the overlap happen in row one. And now we can actually start the puzzle because we can get rid of everything. We can get rid of everything. All of that goes. Boom. Gone. All of the black cells go. All of this goes. And we write five in the corner. And we write, well, okay, now we have, it doesn't quite go. We know that five is next to four or six. We know that the next digits are one or nine. We know that there's now a four or a six on the edges with a one or a nine internal to that. We know that the next digits are always three or seven. So three and seven go into all of those squares. We know that the middle digits are always two and eight. <laughs> and now, what do we do now? We write three in the corner. Now, hang on, that's over Michael. I'm not meant to do that, am I? But I had to put a three in the corner. Make sure the solution has a three in the corner. Oh, OK. It's only the lines. It's only the lines I wasn't allowed to put over Michael. Michael is allowed to have three over him. Michael has now got been, been sullied with a three in the corner. I don't think I get to sing. Do I get to sing <laughs> if, I, if I'm constructing? <laughs> That's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight. <laughs> Losing its religion. Um, now. OK, so what we should do now, presumably, is work out. Because a horizontal thermo is either going to be there or there. Because it's got, it ends with one or, or it begins, I suppose, with one or nine, doesn't it? Depends which direction it goes in. So, so these squares would always be two or eight these would always be three or seven ah so what's the nature of those two digits if that's one let's just think about that so that would be one two three on the thermo oh yeah that's fine that's fine it's not it's, it's definitely because the whisper parity if this is low that's got to be high sorry that's totally obvious threes so how we go ah hang on Ah, OK, here's a point. If the whisper does start from this one, sorry, the whisper, if the, the horizontal thermo starts there, then we can't have a one here because the three is a clash. So this would have to be the nine. Right. So if the thermometer is here, this is a one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This would be a seven, eight, nine, one. Two, three, four. Don't know why that's wrong. But the worrying thing about that is I think that's going to be under less pressure than this one because this one we actually have a given digit to stop this, this being in one direction or the other. That's one and oh and oh no, because we don't have to put four or six close enough to make that matter. Three, seven, four, six. Oh yeah, oh, we get five. Yeah, okay. There's a f okay. So there's a five in the puzzle in one of these positions, definitely, because five is going to be whichever way, whether this is one or nine. You're always going to get five in the middle, aren't you? Three, seven, three, seven. That's three, seven. Oh, I've got it right. Oh, that's really clever. That's really clever, right. Oh, uh, yeah, it's f OK. The, the way to spot this, actually, what I should have done is to is to highlight these 
in uh, in fact that's the way to do in fact that's easily the way to do it isn't it um so i'm going to, we, we know that these have these four digits have the same polarity so let's just put put it like this so these have a different polarity now we know that if this is low polarity the polarity of this is the opposite color so we can make all of those purple and all of these green now look at this now if this is the thermometer let's think about this digit which is three or seven and you can see that if, if this is if this is a one what color is this and the answer is because because by the time we get here we're going to be seven we're going to be you know seven along the thermometer or if this is nine we're going to be counting back towards three this is the opposite color to this one so that is purple but that's purple as well by the highlighting of the top row so those are the same digit and in fact let's do that slowly if that's one we can see that's nine which means this is seven and by the thermometer logic if we've decided this is the thermometer that's going to be two three four five six. isn't that that's really that's really really pretty again so now that's beautiful because now that's not five this is not purple this is the thermometer and now i see why the three is here the three is here because you can work out independently that this is the thermometer start or end and now we know it's not the end because that would go one two three so it's the beginning and this goes one two three four five six seven eight nine and that's going to do everything three four i mean possibly nearly everything actually because now we've got to go one two three oops one two three four nine eight seven six uh, nine eight seven six um right now we can think about other things can't we've got the horizontal arrow pointing east okay and it's got to be as long as possible so that we we know the bulb or the or the circle of that arrow is a six seven eight or nine isn't it so uh, it's not that one because if that's got to be as long as possible it'd be a three cell arrow adding to six and we, the, one of these would need to be a one well it'd be, need to be a one two three triple so that, that one's impossible as well that one is maybe possible uh yeah that could work actually that one I think could also work. Maybe two, oh, two, three, four doesn't work. Oh yeah, but um, one here. No, it's quite difficult to make this one work. Actually, I haven't found a way of making that one work. Yeah, okay. Maybe that's not the way. Maybe maybe we look at the vertical zipper line. So the vertical zipper line, ah. Right, we know that the vertical zipper line has a nine. There's a nine in one of these squares, don't we? And it's not there or there because we've already got nines in these two columns. So there's a nine in one of those squares for sure. And we know that the the sort of the, the digits an equal distance away from the nine add up to um, add up to nine. So that's not nine, because if that was nine, the digit opposite the six, which would be that different digit, would need to be a three, and it can't be. So that's not right. <laughs> Let's see if we can get rid of more of this. If uh, that does, this looks better actually. One and eight would work. Three and no, three and six does not work. You can't put six there. For the same reason it didn't work here really. So that's not right. This one, if that's that's got to be two. Uh, this has got to be five. Hmm, not sure about whether that works. Let's try that one. If that one is nine, no, that doesn't work. If you put nine there, that five needs a four opposite it. And there's a four there, so that doesn't work. It might be this one, only this one works. If this is nine, this is one. Or that, oh, that's three. Now that would clash with a... Um, the king's move thing and me thing oh right right hang on hang on hang on have we decided now 
Well, this puzzle does not have an anti-night constraint now. That's for true. So we're either dealing with anti-king or anti-bishop. Right, now, let's take a look at that. Is anything on this di anything any one of these cells hitting the same digit on the diagonal? Be easy to miss one of these, actually. Uh, no, that's not hitting it. Hmm, or maybe I think this I think this won't work because of the way I think the diagonals hit different colours, don't they? Yeah, they do. Uh, okay, that. Hmm. All right, so we don't know. Well, we know it's. We know anti-knight is not a means of of ruling anything out. So we can't do anything with the fact that if this was 9, that would be a 3. Uh, but if that's a... Th no, okay, now I can rule that out then. Because, but yeah, because either of the other two versions of chess moves preclude this. What I mean is... If that's a 9, that is 3 by zip... Um, yeah, I mean, that's true, because the 9 in the middle, the 9 in this row, determines where the zipper goes. So the zipper would be this way. That would be a 3. That would hit this. And which chess constraint are we now going to argue is applying in the puzzle? We know it's not anti-knight. It couldn't be anti-bishop. These are on the same bishop's colour. And it couldn't be anti-king, because these are see each other by king thing. So there would not be a chess constraint in the puzzle. So that's wrong. So this is not the 9 we're looking for. What about that? If that's a 9, that's a 2. Let's see what's wrong with that. And all that is a 6. Oh, bother. Ah, no, again, doesn't work. Doesn't work because these two see each other. And again, that would preclude all forms of chess constraint. So I think that's the 9, which means this is 5. This is 2. Um, oh, and that's done it. <laughs> because that two is on the same diagonal as this. So this this arrangement here, this two, and well, this two is the is the most magical square, because it it, it stops the puzzle having a uh, a knight's move constraint, and it stops it having a bishop's constraint. So I think we're in anti king world now. And that means. Well, let's see if we can do some more, some more with the zipper. 1, 8 and 3, 6 to place in the column. And they're going to be opposite each other. That's not 3, so that's not 6. That's not 8, so that's not 1. This is not 3, because we know there's an anti-king constraint in the puzzle. In fact, in fact, that's 8. It's not 6 by Sudoku, so that's got to be 8, which means that's got to be 1. Now, that's a 6 and that's a 3 by Sudoku. Good grief. <laughs> and this is our zipper lines. We need to we need to label that. That is our zipper line. Um, the, oh, yeah, we should also, of course, that was our German whispers horizontal. That was our German whispers vertical. And we still got to put in. We still got so we still got to put in the horizontal arrow. And do King's move Sudoku. So, I'm not sure what we should focus on first. Probably, let's just let's just see if we can do a bit of. So I can I can see I can do Sudoku on that box. I can play six in it because we know that if if this was a six, there would be no chess constraint possible in the puzzle. So that's a six. It's a six over here. Okay, that's not very helpful. Um, no. Uh, <laughs> oh dear. Oh no, okay. Where does three go in this box? It can't go there, so it's got to go here. That's a three. So these squares are two, seven, and eight. There's certainly some pencil marking we do there. That can't be seven by the king's move. That can't be two. Hmm. Actually, no, okay, that didn't do as much as I was hoping. Three is in one of those squares by Sudoku. 
5 is in one of these squares. Maybe we've just got to go completely... Oh, where's 3? In this box. There are 4 3's looking at this box, so that, that we can put the 3 in. We've got a lot of 3's, actually. We've got almost... Ah, we can get we can get oh, this one. Where's 3 in box 8? It can't go next to its friend. That's going to give us, I think, all of the 3's out of nowhere. Um... Where is uh, it's not uh, it's not a great question. Eight is in one of those squares. Two is in one of these squares. <laughs> oh, four. Yes. Okay. So I've just, I suddenly remembered one of the the great tricks of King Smooth Sudoku. Digits that are sort of in the middle of a of a box, that, but touching a boundary. These two are where I'm looking. You can see the four can't go in those squares because of the king's move constraint. So the four goes in. It's, it's not going to do anything. But that's that's that is a point. The same is true here. Nine is going to have to be in one of those squares. Oh, it can't be there. Would be a king's move away from itself. So we get a nine, and that's powerful. Where's nine in this box now? That's got to go there, which means that's eight. That's four. This digit is the leftover digit, which looks like it wants to be five. That's a 7 by Sudoku now. So this has become a 2-8 pair. These squares include 1. 1-5, one, I think. Okay, 1-5 pair there. So these squares are 4 and something. 7? I think it's 7. There's a 7 here. That's great. So then we can put the 4 and the 7 in. Um... We do the one five somehow, or the two eight somehow. I don't know. All right, what about these squares? Uh, four, six, nine. Yes, six can be placed. So this is a four nine pair. How many sixes have we got? I feel like we've, we've written a lot of sixes in. Sixes are in one of those squares. Yeah, six can't go there by the king's move, so six is over here. These squares are one, seven, and nine. Yeah, the nine goes here, look. The seven goes here, and the one goes here, because the seven can't go next to its friend. So now, in column five, we know we need one, four, and eight into the middle squares. Yes, where's eight? Eight can't go here, it would be next to its friend. Eight can't go here. So this is eight, this is a one, four pair. These squares are two, five, and seven. That's not seven. That's not two. Are we gonna get chocolate teapotted here? Ah. I can't see how to do that. <laughs> Bother. <laughs> um, Right. All right. What about those two squares? We still haven't. We still haven't figured out what covers up Michael. Um, this is a four-five pair, actually. So we know what these digits are. These have got to be two, six, and one. So that digit's interesting. Uh, not very interesting, but a little bit interesting, because if this digit was one, two, or six, it would obviously rule out one, two, and six from all three of those squares. So that's not going to work. So this digit is not one, two, or three. It could perhaps be four uh, or five. Can't be six uh, or seven. Okay. Oh, sorry. I thought that was going to be an interesting cell, and then it let me down. Um, what about nine? Nine, I can get the nine. There's four nines pointing at box six. How many nines have we got? Loads. Ah, that nine's reaching in here, as is indeed that nine. So that's a nine, that's a four. Fours we've got quite a lot of. Four is in one of those three. Bah. Bar humbug. No, that's no good. Um, let's try, what about this row, maybe? One, two, five, seven into these squares. That's a terrible, terrible choice of, of cells to look at. There's literally no help from the columns. Um, oh, it's going to be this, this rule I've not thought about. One, two, seven, and eight over here. That can't, oh, that's interesting. That can only be one or two. Can't be eight by the king's move or seven by the column. So seven is definitely in one of those two squares in row two. 
but we, we could I could have got that just by Sudoku. All right, let's think about the other rule. What's the other rule we've got? We've got the horizontal arrow pointing east. So we need a cell, which we know is going to be a 6, 7, 8 or a 9. And we know it's going to be three cells long, don't we? So we, we only have to look at 6, 7s, 8s and 9s in these columns. Because otherwise the, the horizontal arrow would not be as long as we could possibly make it. Now... Okay, it's not this one, because we can't put one, two, six in there and no other nine options going to work. So it's not that one, it's not that one. Oh, it could easily be one of, oh, it can't be that one. That's got a nine in its sum. Uh, that is not a high digit. If it was seven here, no, it can't be seven here. That would be one, two, four to the right and two is ruled out. Six here doesn't work. All right, so it's not, it's not in column six. It's not that, that's got a nine to its right. It's not that, that's got a nine to its right. It's, no, it's not that. It would need a six in it and then it would need one and two. Ah, no, that can't have one, two, four. So it's not in column five either. It's not that one. It's not that one. Hmm, could it be that one? It, if it was this one, it couldn't have a three in the sum, so it wouldn't be two, three, four, or one, three, five. It would need to be, oh, it could be one, two, six. I don't believe it. Okay, so it's it, it's probably this one. One, two, six, I can see working, going across here. Whoops. Um, so that one, I don't, I don't want to take my finger off the um, shift button, but I'm going to come back to that one. It can't be eight. So if it's in this column, it can't be that one. Oh, I no, it can't be that one. It can't have two in it. This, no, that doesn't add up to the right number. If it's one of these, it couldn't be that one. Ah, it could be that one. One, three, four do add up to eight. So that is an option. Can't be this one. This one. That one, because that can't be a zero. That one's got a nine on the right of it. Didn't we look at the ones in column one already? That can't, that can't be it. That can't be it. That can't be it. That can't be it. Right. So there's two possibilities. It's this one or this one are the possible cells. Now, if it's this one, it's sort of made to measure. Eight, one, three, four works. These squares would be two, five, six. That couldn't be two, five or six. So that would be one or seven. I can't immediately disprove that. And if this was nine, this would be, it couldn't involve three. So we know we'd be looking at one, two, six. One would be here, two would be here, six would be here. Two, six, that would be five. Ah, that would be four and that doesn't work. Right, I see. So if you make this nine, yeah, and the simple thing to say is where is four in row five? If you, if you make this a nine arrow, because you can't put four on the arrow, it would have to be two, three, four, and there's no three on it. And you can't put four in the row then. So it's that one. And that's beautiful because that is going, well, let's put it in, in fact. Um, we can, oh, hang on, I didn't put my thermometer in. I, I'm so dilatory. Right, so the thermometer is going like that. Now the arrow, i use that one, is going like that. I can't, I don't think it'll let me do. And as I do that, I could do that. That's quite cool. Um, and there we get rid of the red highlight. And we know that's an eight now, I suppose. So eight, two, one goes here. Um, right, these squares are a seven, eight pair. No, they're not. They're an eight, seven like that. We can do it. So eight is going in there by Sudoku. Which seems to, oh no, one of these is a four. I don't know which one. So I've got to be a bit careful there. Seven. Um, seven is in one of those two squares. These squares are two, five, six. Ah, now didn't we think that this was one or seven when we looked at this before? Yeah, so it's now a one. It's, it can only, it's a naked single. So one, five go in. This is two or seven. And 
gosh, I've just looked at how long this has taken me. I mean, how, how can I have had an hour and 20 minutes? I've, I've only just started it. That's absolutely, it's amazing how the time flies sometimes when you're doing these puzzles. You just get completely and utterly lost in them. Um, this is not, where's the two six pair there? We go, oh, six is looking at that, right. So six, two, one. That's now two. We got a five six pair at the top, which is probably resolved by something, but I can't see what. We've got, can we get rid of that one? No, five or seven here. I don't believe it. That's also doesn't seem to want to be resolved. Um, okay, that digit. Let's get rid of those corner pencil marks. That digit is five or six. Ah, yeah, okay. And if it was five, you couldn't put five in box five. So that's got to be six. That's six. That's five. Uh, no. What's 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 sorting this out? Oh, the two there is sorting it out. I see. So seven, two, five, seven, five here. And if we've got this right, that's a two. What a puzzle that is! That is so brilliant. And I have created a Sudoku puzzle. I think. <laughs> yes. Um. Let's like the puzzle for sure. That is just fantastic. That is just fantastic. So, Michael Lefkowitz, that is a brilliant, brilliant puzzle. And you have signed my puzzle. So whatever that was, the, whatever the wording was <laughs> of the person who, um, what did they say? Why did you sign the puzzle I've set? That is very, very funny. Why did you? I mean, I will, to be fair to myself, that wasn't easy to set that puzzle. <laughs> but think about what Michael's had to do. Uh, I mean, imagine finding this grid. I'm just trying to think of the thought process that must go through a setter's mind. They find this grid. He must have found that he could create a valid Sudoku with two German long German whispers. One vertical zipper maybe one hot and then realized that you could uniquify it by ruling digits out of these two cells i don't know yeah i'd love to know how the ordering went in your brain as to how to set this it's so witty and clever it really is it's absolutely fabulous it is absolutely fabulous and actually it probably is quite good if you if you want to get into setting Sudokus, thinking about how some of the constraints opposite operate together. It required quite different thinking to usual solving. It's just a worldie, isn't it? It's an absolute worldie. Um, it's taken me a while. It's, I mean, how is that three stars? That's not three stars. It might be three stars if you guess the answer and don't have to prove. If you don't have to prove that it doesn't work, then it might be three stars. If you just sort of notice that you could put the five in the corner and go from there and find that it works. But it's not three stars if you have to actually think about that, the stuff about the German whisper and how it interlocked with the thermo. I mean, that was that was crazy interesting, but not, not easy. I'm not saying three stars is easy, but it, it's, yeah, that was, yeah, I dispute it. But Michael Lefkowitz, take a bow. That is an, just brilliant. Let me know in the comments whether you managed to set your, your first Sudoku today. I'd be, I'm going to be fascinated to read the comments. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.